Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I'm going to cover in this review is the Sony 70 to 350 millimeter G OSS lens. First, I will quickly break down the features of this lens so you know exactly what you're getting into. After that, I'm going to go into the lab and show you how this lens performs at various focal lengths. After that, I'm going to go into the real world and show you what the lens can do in various situations. After that, I will conclude the review and share my overall thoughts and recommendations as it pertains to this lens, so stay tuned. Now, if you are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this, and there's a little notification bell next to it. Check that bell as well if you wanna get informed when new videos are released. And if you found this video useful, please do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. It'll let other people know, hey, check out this review. It's a great review, thumbs up. Now, if you have any questions, please, below the video, just ask a Way, and I will do my best to try and answer any questions you might have as it pertains to this lens. So the Sony 70 to 350 millimeter f 4.5 to f 6.3 G OSS lens is a high quality telephoto zoom lens optimized for the crop factor E-mount cameras like the Sony A6600, A6500, A6400, A6300, A6100, and so forth. It goes for about $1,000 US, so it's not exactly cheap, but it's also not crazy expensive like some of the GM lenses, for example. So 70 to 350 millimeter on the crop factor cameras works out to an effective 105 millimeter to 525 millimeter. Now that's quite a range and that's a lot of telephoto zoom. The lens also packs optical stabilization and a weather seal design, which is very nice if you're out in the elements in dusty environments or if you're out there, you know, in a little bit of inclement weather and so forth, you're gonna want a weather seal design. So this is good for field sports, motocross racing, car racing, things like that when you're out in the field. Wildlife photography, for example. The lens also has a bunch of manual controls on the side, which is also a very nice feature. It has an autofocus manual focus switch. It has an optical stabilization switch on and off. It has a customizable focus hold button as well. And it also has a zoom lock switch so the lens will remain locked at 70 millimeter. Over time, the lens might loosen up and you might get a little bit of lens creep and the lock switch will make sure the lens stays closed. Like, so if you're walking with the lens, it won't creep open on you. As it is out of the box, there is no lens creep, but once the lens breaks in with thousands of, you know, zoom in and outs, it tends to loosen up and you might get a little bit of lens creep over time. The lens also features an XD linear focus motor, which is great for tracking high speed moving subjects in both photography and video and it's extremely quiet. The lens also has a really nice pinch style lens cap, as you can see here, and it has a nice large lens hood that actually overlaps the lens a little bit when you put it on. Very nice. Now the lens has a large zoom ring here and it's very easy to grip. So even if you're wearing gloves, you're not gonna have a problem gripping the lens. It's a linear manual focus design, so you get very good feedback when using the manual focus, I found. Now this lens weighs in at about 1.4 pounds or 625 grams. So it's not exactly lightweight, but it's significantly less weight than the full frame equivalent type lenses like the Sony 70 to 300 millimeter G lens for the full frame. That lens weighs almost half a pound heavier and it actually has less zoom range. So because it's optimized for the smaller crop factor sensors, the diameter of the lens is significantly smaller, which results in smaller glass and lighter weight. That's a huge advantage when getting a lens optimized for the crop factor cameras. It's smaller in size and lighter in weight. Now, as far as minimum focus distance goes, this lens offers a 3.6 feet minimum focus distance or 1.1 meter approximately. So you can get very close to your subjects even when zoomed into 350 millimeter, which will allow for killer background separation as you can see here. So the lens also has 19 glass elements inside in 13 groups. So there's quite a bit of glass in there. It has very high quality glass though, extra low dispersion elements, spherical elements, and so forth. That basically ensures nice crisp photos and sharpness corner to corner, as well as very little fringing. So that purple and green fringing you might see on some cheaper lenses, you're not really gonna see that on this lens as you will see in the lab testing and real world photos I will show you in a minute. The aperture diaphragm has seven blades. So when shooting wide open, you're gonna get nice round circular bouquet balls but when you stop it down to like f8 f11 the bouquet balls will start to octagon a little bit so the filter thread on this lens is 67 millimeters so if you want to screw on 
ND filters, polarizer filters, UV filters, for example, you're going to need 67 millimeters for that. I have a bunch of recommended filters below the video, by the way, if you're looking for some recommendations in that regard. All right, let's head over to the lab and I'll show you what I got. You can see up here on the top left, I was shooting at 70 millimeter and I was at the aperture of f4.5. I wanted to show you how this lens performs wide open because most likely that's where you're going to be using it. So if you zoom in here, you can see the sharpness at f4.5 is absolutely fantastic. Really exceptionally good. And the chromatic aberrations, fringing, extremely well controlled. You can see all the way down here in the corner, it's very, very sharp. Exceptionally sharp, as a matter of fact. I was very impressed when I saw how sharp this lens was wide open. Now, the lens profile was automatically enabled when I imported these photos, so I wanted to show you what the distortion looks like. And you can see there is a significant amount of distortion here at 70 millimeter. But if you're using software like Lightroom, you can easily just enable the lens profile correction and that straightens it out for you. If you're shooting in JPEG mode, the camera will automatically straighten this out for you as well. So there is a significant amount of distortion, but at the end of the day in the real world, it does not really affect image quality as long as you have the enabled profile correction checked. All right, so let's move on to 100 millimeter. And you can see at 100 millimeter, I'll just zoom in here so you can see the corner sharpness. It's fantastic. Contrast and color is also really good. And there's, like I said, there is no like purple fringing or anything like that. So you are getting fantastic G badge quality optics here with this lens. Now looking at about 135 millimeter here, again, we have exceptionally good sharpness all the way corner to corner and nice punchy colors and things like that. The depth of field is starting to get a little more narrow because I'm zoomed so close in on the lab scene here, but still exceptionally good sharpness across the board. Now zoomed in to about 200 millimeter here. Let me show you again the sharpness and you can see the sharpness is fantastic. And again, the depth of field is starting to become a factor here because I'm so close to the lab scene and at this focal range, you know, the, the, the difference in distance between the dollar bill and this circuit board is like half an inch. So the depth of field is starting to become a factor. But again, overall sharpness is exceptionally good corner to corner. Now here at 350 millimeter, again, you can see excellent sharpness. It does look like it's a little bit soft here when zoomed in to 100%, but that is because of the depth of field. You can see here on the wood, the sharpness is extremely good, and I focused on the dollar bill. So the dollar bill is very, very sharp all the way, even in the corner area. So because it's a little bit softer on the circuit board, that's because the circuit board is about half an inch closer to the camera compared to the dollar bill, which is what I focused on. So you have to look at the dollar bill for reference here when comparing sharpness at this range in my lab test. So here we are looking at the minimum focus distance and you can see how large the quarter is when at that minimum focus distance. So you get a decent amount of magnification. Now when I stop, this is wide open at f6.3. So here's f8, here's f11, here's f16, and here's F22. So notice how the bouquet balls start to octagon as you stop it down. And that's because of the seven blade aperture diaphragm. Some other lenses will have more aperture diaphragm blades, like nine blades, and that will result in a more round bouquet when you have it stopped down like this. But overall, I would say this looks really good. And you can see how the bolt behind the quarter gets more sharp as the depth of field increases. All right guys, so now I'm gonna show you some real world photos, starting with the Bashirka Wildlife Preserve. I was down there near sunset and I got some really good shots. And I also took some video footage a little bit earlier in the day. All right, so I was testing the lens flaring at the basher kill, and I just wanted to show you what kind of lens flaring you can expect when shooting into the sun. Now, I did have the camera set wide open at f4.5 for this shot, 
And to make the lens flaring a little more noticeable, I'm just going to hit this auto button here over on the right hand side and that will auto adjust the photo and obviously it didn't really do the greatest job but it did emphasize the lens flaring so you can see just what kind of lens flaring you can expect now of course I could drag the blacks down a little bit to make the image look a little bit better and lower the shadows and, and so forth. There is a little bit of lens flaring there, but overall, very well controlled, I would say. All right, guys, so for this next segment, I'm gonna show you a couple photos I took down in Monroe, New York. I was just walking around on the street and I took a couple of photos. I'm just gonna use Lightroom because I wanted to walk you through the photos and just talk about them as I go. So you can see here, this was a zoom range test at 70 millimeter. So here's approximately 200 millimeter. And here is 350 millimeter. So then I was just walking along here and I happened to see a squirrel. And looking through the fence here, you can see just how killer that separation is. It actually framed the shot quite well. Now, I took another photo and I wanted to show you what it looks like when you focus on the foreground. And you can see the squirrel out of focus there in the center. And it's pretty cool that just that depth of field play you get with a focal range like this. And just walking along, I saw a cool like nest here sitting in the tree and zoomed in. You could just see how killer that background separation is and the 3D pop you get. Also the details on that hive are pretty darn good. Now here I just focused on a reflector pole because I wanted to show you how the background renders. You can see here, now I focused on this sign and you can see this vertical out of focus area. That is this reflector pole. So out of focus it looks like that in the foreground and you can see what the background looks like when I'm focused on the reflector. So that's that depth of field play you get with a high focal range lens like this and this was at 350 millimeter. Now I got closer to the sign and I wanted to show you a focal range test. So here's 70 millimeter. Now here's 203 millimeter and here's 350 millimeter. So you can just, again, see that focal range you get. Now, looking down the street, here's zoomed into 273 millimeter. It's just an interesting street scene. Now, this would obviously look better if somebody was walking along, but I'm just taking test shots here. Then I panned up and just zoomed in on the sign here, got a little closer. And again, you can see that high contrast background out of focus area renders just really well. And the lens handles that high contrast area exceptionally good. There's zero fringing. I don't see any purple, any green, any of that type of stuff. Even on this edge here, it's very, very well controlled. Now there was an excavator sitting in the parking lot and I took a shot here of the back bucket area where the pivots are and you can see here at 70 millimeter you get this now zoomed into 275 millimeter you get this view so you can see the difference just using that zoom range then I took a shot of the bucket itself now here's at 70 millimeter just the bucket teeth and then zoomed into 350 millimeter you get this quite awesome if you ask me now here's just a shot of the piston on the back looking up and I thought this came out pretty cool. It's a nice perspective style shot. And also looking up, there was a pulley hanging from a beam coming out of the building. And I just thought it looked pretty cool, zoomed up. And you can see I focused on the very front part of the pulley. And this mechanism was about four feet in length. So four feet away, you can see how out of focus the beam renders. And that's that depth of field you get. Now for a serious depth of field test, I zoomed in on the brick wall here to give you that perspective look. And this is what you get at 70 millimeter, wide open at f4.5. And now zoomed in, this is what you get at 350 millimeter. And you can just see that depth of field fall off is incredible. And again, here's 70 millimeter and 350 millimeter. All right guys, so for this next test, I took a couple of photos around the house. Alright guys, I just wanted to compare the 70 to 350 quickly to some of the other lens options that are out there as far as telephoto zoom lenses go. Now you have the 
very affordable 55 to 210 millimeter lens. I actually did a video comparing these two lenses, so be sure to check that video out if you're interested in more you know, detailed explanation between the two. But basically this lens goes for $350. It's much smaller, it's much lighter weight. It has significantly less zoom range on the telephoto end, but it's extremely affordable at $350. And it's significantly smaller and lighter as you can see here. So this is a great option if you're on a budget and you just want a nice lightweight telephoto zoom range to add to your kit. But clearly the 70 to 350 millimeter G lens offers much better optical quality, but it is much larger, much heavier as well. Now another lens would be the full frame 70 to 300 millimeter G OSS lens, which is actually extremely similar to this lens, except it's optimized for the full frame sensor. So it's gonna be a larger diameter lens. So it's about half a pound heavier. It also has less range, 300 millimeter versus 350 millimeter. And it's about $275 more for that lens. But if you plan on upgrading to a full frame E-mount mirrorless camera at some point, you'd be better off investing in that lens. This way, when you switch over to the full frame format, your optics will be good to go. This lens is only optimized for the crop factor cameras, as I mentioned earlier. So it will work on the full frame cameras, but it'll actually only work in crop factor mode. Now, another lens option you have is the full frame 100 to 400 millimeter GM lens. Now that lens goes for $2,500 and it weighs more than double this lens. It's way larger as well. That is a phenomenal lens. I also reviewed that lens, but it's $2,500 versus $1,000. So they're so drastically different in price and the zoom range is very similar. So, you know, depending on your budget and your needs, that's another lens worth considering if you want the absolute best telephoto zoom you can get. This lens does not have the fluorine lens coating or the nano AR lens coating that some of the more expensive lenses have. If it did have those things, this lens would probably be about $1,500 compared to the $1,000 that it's currently priced at. Now I used this on the Sony a6400 and it worked great, but when you combined it with a sensor stabilized camera body like the new a6600, it'll even work better in lower shutter speed situations. If you're trying to hand hold at lower shutter speeds, you will be able to do a better job with an image stabilized camera. But on the a6400, this lens really did perform fantastic and the optical stabilization worked great. So at the end of the day, guys, I would highly recommend this lens. Please let me know what you think about this lens. And, you know, I got some great shots with it. I was very happy with the performance across the board. It was fun to use. Fairly lightweight considering that zoom range and the image quality is significantly better than the 55 to 210, which I actually own. If you're in the market for a lens and your budget is around $1,000 and you're looking for a telephoto zoom, I would highly consider the 70 to 350. It's a new lens and it performed really well in the real world, I would say, and it performed really well in the lab also. It did have a little bit of distortion, but it's easily correctable, and the sharpness was great corner to corner at pretty much all the focal ranges. So I highly recommend the lens at the end of the day for the money. It's definitely a good value for the dollar in my opinion. All right guys, so that is it for this review. I really hope you got what you were looking for. Please let me know what you think of the 70 to 350 millimeter lens. And if you have any questions, please below the video, just ask away. All right guys, I will catch up with you next time. Have a great day.